Hi, Matt Sinclair. Today I want to talk about the UK news market. There's new data out today from Ofcom about how UK news consumption continues to change. I've done some comparisons looking back from the 2023 data here to five years ago in 2018. I think that gives a nice before and after COVID and gives a nice sense of the medium term change versus you know, some of the distortions of the COVID years. Uh, obviously, it's an important market in democratic political terms, but also in terms of a lot of the debates we're having at the moment around internet regulations they aim to intervene in this area, whether that's the online safety bill and some of its changes to uh, the discoverability of news uh, or the DMCC digital markets bill uh, and how it might regulate commercial exchanges uh, between platforms and news providers. So first and probably not a surprise, but the shift to online news is still continu continuing. It doesn't look to me though, particularly like necessarily a shift to social media, more a shift within social media from PCs to smartphones and an ongoing shift away from you know, the enormous share of news that, that starts out as um, TV. Uh, radio continues to be probably, I think, a bigger deal than the profile it gets in the debate around the news industry. And TV and radio both are just absolutely enormous as sources of news. And so you know, while we obviously talk about the trends and how it's changing, we shouldn't lose sight of how kind of conti the continued importance of uh, the broadcast media. Within that data, what sort of what news people use, there's a lot of data on the combinations. One that's probably quite interesting is the internet only contingent, sort of yeah, the equivalent of cord cutting, but for news. And that's growing pretty sharply uh, as a range of op on offline options from TV to printed newspapers contract. Looks like they're not just contracting in terms of, okay, I used to say watch uh, you know, a TV news bulletin uh, and read some stuff online. Um, uh, and you know, read a newspaper, but it might be they're losing both offline options and just going online. So it's quite a significant growth in that internet only population. But if we go down a level from those big aggregates, look at individual news sources, uh, I think there's a load of really interesting stories. Uh, here I've limited it though, just, just for the sake of you know, sanity on the graph, which is already pretty busy. I've limited it to those which are the most important news for, source for 1% or more of the population in 2018 or 2023. And that's what I believe this percentage is. Now that does count a lot of important media, uh, including some that might be important for influential demographics. So, you know, prestigious, there are some prestigious broadsheet newspapers that don't um, uh, have their impact through reaching a lot of people, but through reaching a smaller subset of people who matter, matter to financial markets, matter politically. Uh, looking within this data, though, you can see a few things. Again, linear TV is still absolutely massive, but declining. And I think when we're thinking about the substitution, when other you know, media grows, we often focus on, say, newspapers, but I think really it's what cutting chunks out of linear TV um, is really sort of the big the big trend. And there's a lot of that still to come. There's a lot of room really almost for every other source of news to grow in prominence uh, as linear TV likely continues uh, to see a, see a decline. The BBC is still a very big deal uh, as well. Uh, and in some ways I'd say its influence is diversifying. So BBC One News might be you know, less overwhelming than it maybe was at one point, but the website's growing. Uh, more of its radio stations meets the sort of 1% threshold to come onto this graph in 2023 than in 2018. Uh, and I think it's interesting to see um, uh, to, to sort of see that, that that evolving picture of how the BBC, the role the BBC plays. Uh, in terms of newspapers, unfortunately, it is quite a, you know, printed newspapers. Uh, there is a decline there and we haven't yet seen many of these sort of newspaper websites crack through uh, into having that scale that the printed newspapers did. Some have, you know, Guardian uh, um, and the, the Mail, for example, but, but not all. Uh, again, some of those fit in that category I mentioned earlier of important, but not necessarily important through the raw numbers. Uh, I think it's interesting to see GB News show up. Obviously, it's not huge on this graph, but considering some of the challenges that have been reported there, uh, since it launched, I think it's a pretty big deal to be on this graph at all. Um, and, and it is here, right? So 
And I think finally, and perhaps most importantly for the kind of stuff we cover on this channel, online platforms look to me like they're diversifying. So meta uh, platforms and Google absolutely remain, remain relevant as businesses, but more through the growth of smaller news platforms than through their main platforms growing. So, you know, the, the domain Facebook app contracts here, um, but you know, Instagram grows, WhatsApp grows. Um, the role of Google search doesn't grow, but Google News and YouTube show up on here in the way they didn't in 2018. But outside of those big platforms, you've got TikTok, LinkedIn, Apple News, all crushing the party and all with their own potential to grow over time. And so I think it's an interesting kind of um, a picture of diversification going on uh, among uh, platforms which people see as their main source of news. Finally, just in terms of how people find their news, because of course, you know, there is more going on than what's your main source of news. And I don't really necessarily trust sort of polling people about what news source do you think is important. I think that there can be a bit of a signaling in the answer you get to that. But in terms of people, how, how they find their news. I think the big story here is that most people are going to specific sources rather than stories. So for now, at least, I think that is important for concerns around click clickbait or people not knowing the source of their news. Because if they're still going, mostly going either direct or using a search engine in order to go direct, say searching for a source rather than a story, this kind of must be to some extent a minority concern. It could still be really important to be clear, because if there's a chunk of the population, even if it's not most, um, that you know are sort of following the clickbait or don't know where the news is coming from, that could still be important socially and democratically. But you know, mostly there is still people saying, OK, where am I going to find the news rather than I've come across this story? I think that will mostly be happening through the social media column in this chart. So just stepping back, you know, there's a whole load more in that data. I've just tried to put together what I think are some of the most interesting um, uh, sort of graphs where we can draw some most interesting comparison over time. Um, which maybe has the most relevant to some of the kind of, di sort of internet regulation, digital markets, news that we cover the most on this uh, channel. But I still think there's a few interesting uh, things here. Firstly, as I started with, the news consumption continues to migrate to the smartphone. That's where every news source is going to have to find its home over time, um, unless a new platform comes along. Um, the news platform market looks to me like it's getting more diverse. Uh, it's interesting to think about this alongside, say, the trends in the digital ads market, uh, where the big two are losing market share. It certainly doesn't look very winner takes all. You know, there is a, there's, I think, again, it's a story where uh, different businesses with relationships to um, consumers it, it, that, that themselves differ. So, you know, Apple, for example, through the device, um, are, bring, are, are sort of providing new kinds of news platforms. Uh, which are becoming important to more users over time. And finally, you know, people can continue to go to news sources as much as news stories. It means there's still a place for cultivating that brand, that consumer relationship. It is not yet all about living or dying on the market for each individual story. So I hope you found that interesting. A lot more in there, but I'd love to know what you think. Uh, you know, anything else, anything interesting that you've seen in the news consumption data over time? Uh, any thoughts on what I've mentioned today, please do like and subscribe. I look forward to speaking to you next time.